Well, guys, thank you all for joining yet another meetup. This time, um, you asked for a more technical session. You asked for something relating to agents according to the past polls that we have. Uh, it's my honor and pleasure to present and host Gal Peretz, a good friend, a great consultant, uh, and we've worked together in the past. Uh, Gal, amongst other things, uh, has his own consultancy firm, uh, a priori. He's also the VP R&D of Renov AI and the founder and co-host of the most successful Gen AI podcast uh, in the past year. Lang Talks. Most notably, relating to this session, Gal has vast experience hands-on developing agents in production, and he'll share some of his how-tos with us today. This session is both a high-level and technical, which I personally love. Gal, thank you for joining us, and I'll let you take it from here. Cool. Then you. Thank you, Akoni. So yeah, as Akoni mentioned, my name is Gal Peretz. I'm coming from a background of software engineering, worked for companies like Microsoft and, and IBM, and then did my transition to data, went to the Technion to do my master in NLP, and then led some various startups as an NLP researcher, then opened my LLM and Gen AI consulting company, which called a, a priori. And today I'm the VP R&D of Renovai, and also a pleasure to, to have the podcast of Lang Talks that I hope that most of you or some of you know and listen to. So yeah, let's jump right into it. Today we'll talk about building agents for production use. The agenda, let's talk, let's talk about what we are going to cover. So first we will define what is exactly agent and how it's different from LLM, regular LLM. Then we will jump right into building our first agent, like the hello world edition for agent. Then we will think about how we can add some memory and state and um, for like transforming this hello world to a real use case and real world use case. We will explore some, some notion that I think is, is less known called workflows engineering. I think most of us know what, what is prompt engineering, but what is workflows engineering? So we'll cover that and we cover how we can use it to improve LLM applications. And then we will dive into expanding our first agent with the memory and with the state to a multi-agent system to improve the solution. So a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff, a lot of exciting stuff. Let's just start with the beginning. So I guess most of you know what is an LLM and what is looks like interaction with an LLM and ChatGPT. So mostly like you are asking some question, you have some prompt to do or task to do. You ask the LLM if it's ChatGPT or you are using the API, it doesn't ma really matter. What is really matter is that the LLM count on his previous knowledge to understand what you want and just output the response, right? And if in the training phase, in the data set of the training of the LLM, he didn't know, he didn't, he didn't show him something or he missed some information because time has, time has passed from the last training, so of course, then start the hallucination, right? So this is like interaction with an LLM, but the difference between LLM and LLM based agent is that we are using the LLM here. We have the human, right? And we are asking some question. And now we are using the LLM as an agent, which can make decision. Okay. So we are giving some autonomy to this LLM to decide what to do. So he can decide to run some tool, some third-party tool, external tool, to like filling the gap, filling the gap that, that, that he missed um, in terms of information, right? So the LLM decide what to do. I want to run some tool. Then he tell the agent executor, which is another component. It may be an LLM or may not. And then the agent executor just execute the tool. For example, it can execute some Python code and then get the output and give the LLM as a context. The LLM then understand if you need to uh, run another tool or if it's enough and it just can answer the, the question of the, of the user, right? So this is basically the difference between LLM and LLM-based agent. 
but I want to show an example. And in this, in this session, I will show some notebooks, some code, all the code will be available in GitHub. And you can, after the session, you can go and explore and think about what, what can we do differently and run the code. But we, we will go now and work through, through the code. The load world solution will be pretty easy and straightforward. So let's get jump right into it. Okay, so we are defining some, some environment variable, just the OpenAI key, pretty easy, pretty straightforward that we will have access to the LLM of OpenAI. Then we will define something called tools. So we, we said that agents can exact or can run some tools. So we are defining the tool that he can run right now. And in this situation, it's pretty simple. We can just run a tool as a function that can count the number of words in a sentence. Okay, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. We will give the ability of the LLM to run this tool. Now, what I want to show in this example is that if we will use straightforward LLM and give it the task of count, count the number of words in this sentence and output the number, and we will run this, I will tell you the response that we should have. We should have like 12 because there are 12 words here. And of course, because the misunderstanding of the LLM, how it tokenize words and how it represent words in his, in his like input. So he got the wrong answer, right? So this is exactly the spot that you want to first uh, stop and understand, or the LLM want to stop and understand, okay, I'm not good at this task of counting words. I need to use a tool. So let's try that. Let's define the agent, define the agent executor. Now the agent can understand instead of just respond the answer directly, he can understand that he want to run some tool. So as the output suggests, we are running the words count tool with this sentence. This is the input for the tool. And you can see that the tool output 12, and this is the right response. Okay. So I hope this showcase, why do we need agents, right? Why, why can we just use LLM directly and fill in the gap uh, directly with, with training some LLM? Okay. So let's take this example and break it down. What, what we saw is basically the user ask some question. Let's say for now that the question is how many character in the middle name of Will Smith? Okay. Now, instead of just counting words, we are switching the counting words to count characters. So we will give the LLM a tool to count characters. And we also will give him access to the se to, to search engine. Right now we will use DuckDuckGo search, but you can use like Google search or another, another engine. Okay. So First, what the LLM need to do is basically to think, to decide on a strategy of what to do next. Do I need to operate with a tool or do I need to run a tool to use a tool? Or can I have, can I just respond the, the right output? Okay. So this decision of what to do, we have strategy for it. Okay. There are two kinds of strategy or even more, but those, those are the, co the common ones. The first one is prompt-based strategy. What is prompt-based strategy? The most common one in this category called React. And what we are doing in this, in this category of strategy is basically prompt engineering the LLM and guide it to pause and understand if you want to act with the tool. And then afterwards to, to execute this tool and then to observe the output. We are doing that using the prompt. In the prompt, we are giving it an example of what, what, what you should do when you get an, an input. And then we are asking him to follow this example, right? The other type of category is called OpenAI tools or OpenAI function. They are changing their name right now to tools because in function, you can execute just one function. And in this OpenAI tools, the new one, you can execute more. But the important one is that this class of strategy is based on fine-tuned LLM. So they took an LLM, all right? And you, are just, you don't need to prompt engineering the LLM. 
because it's already fine-tuned to understand if you want to execute the function and if you do, what is the input for the function, okay? So you can choose whatever strategy that works, React and or OpenAI uh, functions. In my opinion, the common one and the popular one is OpenAI function right now. So you can start with that, okay? After you are defining the strategy for the agent, it can understand, okay, I get this input of how many character in the middle name of Will Smith, I will apply my strategy and decide what to do. So he will decide to operate with the DuckDuckGo search and he will say what is the input for the function. He is not executing the function. This is the important point. He's not executing the function. The role of the agent is only to decide what to do and what is the input, okay? Now, the executor will execute the DuckDuckGo search and then he will get the output. The output will send to the agent again to understand what to do next. The agent will understand what to do next and now he understand that he need to count the words of Carl, the, the middle name of Will Smith. Then the agent will execute the function of counting the characters of Carl and the response is seven, of course, and the agent will decide, okay, I have enough, I have enough information, I can respond to the user. This is the flow of a regular agent, a fully autonomy agent, okay? Let's see that in code. So as always, we're defining some environment viable, pretty straightforward, some imports. And then I wanted to show you how simple is the prompt for the LLM because of the agent, because it's not based on prompt engineering. It's based on the, the, the fact that I'm giving him a fine-tuned LLM that if he need to operate, if we need to apply some function, he knows that because it's fine-tuned for it. So the prompt is pretty simple. It's just a system prompt with you are helpful and, and the input of the human, the input of the task, okay? Now let's define the function. This is how we, do, we define tools and functions for the LLM. So for a regular tool, if it's like a function, Python function, you can annotate that with a tool. And basically the description that you give to the, the, the tool or the function, this is the, the description that the LLM will use to understand if you need to use this tool or not. Okay, so this is important. Those two are important. The one that annotated as a tool and the one of the description. This function, you can see it's pretty straightforward. Counting words is just uh, executing the length of the words. Um, and that's it. Now we have the count uh, character count uh, tool. And we will also use a built-in tool named DuckDuckGo search that comes with, with LangChain. Now, when, when we define that and convert that to something that LL, like the OpenAI function LLM can understand, we need to use a helper function, and this is how the LLM see that, okay? You see that as a function with a name, what is the description, when, when do I, I need to use it, and what are the parameters, and what should I output, okay? This is how the LLM see that. Now, after defining the tool, we want to bind the tool to the LLM that he can understand that he can use those tools, okay? So there are shortcuts in uh, LangChain. You can just uh, use a helper function, but this is how it looks like, basically. It's just using the prompt that I showed you, having some scratch pad for the agent, use this LLM bind with the tools that we just construct, and then an output parser that parse the, the action of the OpenAI tools uh, output. So when we define the agent, so this is only this component, right? And as I said, if you are just invoking this agent without the agent executor, it will just say what to do. So this is how it looks like. If we will invoke the agent or run the agent with what is the most popular, popular city, populated city in the world, so we will get the, the action that we need to take, which is a DuckDuckGo search with a tool input of the, the right query to search for, okay? But it's not invoking it. Now for, for 
for the extra step for really have this loop of agent agent and agent executor we need the agent executor so we will initialize the agent executor with an agent and tools that he will also know how you what what tool to use and then when we will invoke how many characters in the middle name of Will Smith, we will see that he used character count and then count for the name of Will Smith and the middle name of Will Smith, he, he got it from his previous knowledge, right? So this is a bug because what we want is basically that the LLM won't count on his previous knowledge to, to say something. So he needed to search for the middle name of Will Smith, and then understand the, how many character we have. So it's very important point to stop and understand when do we when do we want to integrate some some tracing system. Now I'm using Langchain here, so the the Langsmith platform is pretty straightforward to use, but you can use any any platform. I suggest that if you use Langsmith uh, Langchain, you will use Langsmith as a, as a completion for the Langchain framework. So let's see this uh, last execution, okay? So we can input the Langsmith, we can see the execution, we can spot the right, the right point that the agent decides to act with the tool. This is the spot, okay? So this is the, the error and we can go to playground and we can change the prompt. So we can say for, to him ex explicitly, don't count on your previous knowledge. Search the web instead. Okay. So start. And now we can see that this is the right, this is the right response, right? He go to DuckDuckGo with Will Smith middle name. So this is the change that we, win, we need to do in order to fix our agent. Okay, so I will do it inside the input because I don't want to change the system. So I, in the input itself, I can also like in, in sort of hack it and, and just add this input of don't count on previous information, search the web instead. And if I will execute that, you can see that he go first to Dr. Go, understand that the middle name of Will Smith is Carl, and then and then go to, to the character count, and the response is seven. Okay, cool. So we improved the, the, the LLM using prompt engineering, and we have the system of traceability. One second. But another aspect that we can take into account when trying to improve some, some agents and flows is workflows engineering. Now, this, this term is pretty not, not, not very familiar, but in workflows engineering, we decide what the human design and which kind of autonomy do we get to give to the agent itself, okay? There are like several, a uh, few, few types of, of systems. The first one, which give most of the design to the human is router plus code. In router plus code, what we do is basically give the LLM the, the ability to decide what to do, which action to take and which flow to go. But you as, you as developer and us as developer deciding what are the existing flow in the system. So we, are, we can decide that we have a flow for recommendation. We can decide that we have a flow for conversation in advance. And we decide the actions. And the LLM just decide where to go. In the next step, plan and execute, we give more to the agent. So the agent also plan what to do, but it also construct the plan, all right? It construct the steps. But then it can just execute the, the plan directly. It cannot go back. There are no cycles here. Okay? It cannot regret and go back to the first, to the first uh, step and plan it again. The next step of autonomy, we, we, agree, we will give the, the, the uh, human uh, design the, the graph, the state machine. Okay? 
we have a state machine here, which each node is pretty much an agent. The agents communicate with each other, but we will define who can communicate with who, okay? We will define the nodes, we will define the edges, we will define the condition of each node to go to an, a, a specific agent. And of course, what we already saw is the fully autonomous. We just have a loop of agent and agent executor. We give the, the agent the tool and it just executes. And as we saw, there are bugs that uh, it's pretty hard to, to spot in a real production environment. Um, in my opinion, the most popular one in production right now is router plus code, to be honest. But in the future, I think the most popular one will be state machine. The fully autonomous one is super dynamic, but it, it's not really give us the ability to control the system as good as we, as we want. So the state machine is the combination of giving the agent the, the autonomous that he needs to, to make the application dynamic in certain points. But then like workflow engineering, the, the, the other points, the other system that, and, and just give a restriction in the, in the right, in the right places. Okay. So this is workflow engineering. And then if we want to expand a, a little bit further, we can in real production use case, we need another thing. We need a state, right? We have the agent, we can ask question, he can execute the tools. But then in real production, user is not really asking one question and that's it. He has, he has a conversation with the agent, okay? And this conversa conversation, each message in the conversation is not really a, a siloed question. It can be a continuation of the, of the flow of the conversation. So how, how it looks like. So let's say the, the user asks some question, what is the current price of Apple stock, okay? And we have this agent and agent executor. The agent executor has uh, the tools. He can go to the, to the DuckDuckGo search as we did with Will Smith and get the response. Okay, so now we have the response. But the next question is, and what about Microsoft? And now we need to know that the first question was about the stock of Apple. And the, the next question is about the stock of Microsoft. We need a way to retain this history, right? So we can say, okay, we can just input that in the prompt, right? We can have this, the, all the dialogue, just like stuff it and, 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 and just input that in, in the LLM prompt. And this is a, a good use case and a good solution. But the idea here is that where, where do we save this state, right? Where do we save this conversation? Do we save it in the client side? Do we save it in the in the server side, if we save it in the server side, how do we save it? Because the, the state of the art really a paradigm right now in serverless and, and also microservices is not to save state, right? We need like microservices with, that they are stateless because if we, we want like, like a lot of replicas, we cannot save state. So what is the best solution to save state, the, the conversation itself? So let's go back to the code and let's add some state to our agent. So what we will see here in this notebook, we will build this agent and agent executor flow uh, from scratch and we will also add some state to it. So first, what we, do, what we will do is again, some environment viable and import straightforward. We will just use right now the DuckDuckGo search. And now we will define our state, okay? A state here is basically a simple function or a simple class that will define the state. And our state will be the messages which serve as the conversation itself. And we will expand this state in the, in the next phase. Okay, right now it's simple state messages. Now, as I said, we will build right now the agent executor from scratch. We will use best practices, which is LangGraph right now to build this state graph. Okay, 
and we will like build this loop between the agent and the action and should we continue. This is how it's going to look like and the graph will have the state that we constructed. So how we should do that? Okay, so we have the LLM, which is pretty much like straightforward OpenAI function LLM that can execute some tools or actually decide to execute the tool, not execute, just decide the tool to execute and respond to the user. So we have the agent node, which is this. We have the should we continue, which is this, which is just ask, do we have a tool to, to act with or do we, are, are we finished, right? So if we finish, we will go to the, to the finish, to the end. And if not, we will go to co the continue. And if we will continue, we will go to the action. The action will just execute the tool. So this will serve as the agent executor for us, okay? So after defining those nodes, we have the state, which is the memory, right? And we have the nodes. And now we are constructing the edges. We are constructing the connection between the nodes. So the, the connection will be between the agent and the should, should continue and the should continue to the action, okay? Should continue, we'll decide if to go to the action or to go to the end. We compile the graph. This is how the graph looks like already with the state. The, straight, the state right now is empty. But let, let's see what's happened when we are uh, sending some response, uh, sending some input. So we are sending a simple question. What is the pop population size of Canada? We will get the response, but also we can output all the state. So when we will output all the state, we can see that we have all the conversation, right? But this is not really answering the question, where do we save the state? In real production system, we need to state not to save as a, as a RAM in the, in the memory itself of the, of the pod or the, the server. We need to dump it somewhere. So in this solution, we are not dumping that anywhere. So we, we need to, con, to, con, like to construct an input with the previous state that the agent will understand that this is a continuation of flow of conversation. So if you will do that and ask a question, we will get the right response, right? So for example, N for China, he will understand that the first, the first question was about the population size of Canada and will understand the flow of the conversation. But then if we will drop that, he won't understand. So we need a way to dump, to dump the, the memory, the state somewhere where in the middle of the, the first question of the user to the second question, we can get some other conversation in between. So we will use something called checkpoint that will checkpoint this state, the conversation with the user. And it's pretty straightforward. You just construct the, connect the connector, which is for, for example, for me is a SQLite. We will construct it using a connection string. We, right now we will use a memory connection string but it can be a remote connection string, of course. And we just, when we compile the graph with the state, we will just get a, give a, a checkpointer, checkpointing with a memory. And now with this checkpointer, we have a configuration and we have a trade ID. If we will construct it with a trade ID, this can be the unique conversation of the user. So imagine that you have a conversation and when you are done with the user, it's dumped all the state to the, this SQLite. Now we will run it. And then this is the output basically. And then if you will continue the conversation so the first one was, what do you think about the Apple stock? And we have the answer based on the latest information, Apple stock performance closely monitor. And then the continue of the conversation will get the same trade ID and he, he know that he need to um, retain this state first and then answer the question. So when we will do that, we don't need to concat the, the previous input to the, to the next input. And Microsoft Corporation MSFT, this is the stock of Microsoft and uh, explanation about the, about the stock. So we had this agent agent executor, we had this workflow engineering, and we have the state. 
Now, if we will double double down of, about this workflow engineering, what we can do is basically expand both vertical, also the state and the, the, the workflow itself, the engineering itself of the workflow. Why do we want to do that? Imagine that you have a task of blogging on, on, on some topic, right? So you can use an LLM, you can use an agent and agent executor, but then, for example, you want to construct as, 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 as we do when we have a, 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 like a, a division of responsibility between humans, right? When we are, when we are like, like, for example, when we are constructing a blog, we are maybe doing the research and then we are like writing the blog. We have maybe an editor that critique the research, critique the blogger. And then we have like this harmony of, of system that like complete each other, right? So this is how we want to, to construct our system as like division of separation of responsibility. Each agent can be responsible for specific tasks, can get a specific tools and be the best in his job. Okay. So let, let's take this, this uh, question of blogger and researcher. And right now we will expand this workflow engineering and, and we'll apply the state machine here uh, for this solution. We will have the researcher that his only job is to research about the topic and uh, report to the supervisor. The supervisor then critique the researcher job and can, and can say, this is not enough. You are missing this point and this point. Do the research again with a different angle about the subject. Okay. So you can reject his job. But then if it, if it accepts his job, he will do the same thing with the blogger. He will share their finding of the researcher with the blogger and then ask him to blog about that. The blogger can then use some prompt engineering technique. He can use various LLM to do his thing. And then he will report with a draft. The supervisor will can understand, okay, this draft is accepted or not. He will act as the editor. This draft is accepted or not. If it's not accepted, this is the, this is the missing part. This is the missing point. When he decided there are missing points, maybe we want to complete the research again. And maybe we want to go to the research. Then the supervisor will do this like separating the task between the researcher and blogger till he understand, okay, I had enough. This is the right blog to, to give to the user and we'll output the, the blog itself, okay? So for that, we need to expand the, the state. You need to expand the, the state that we previously had, we just memory to a state with 10, which will act as what, who, who should act right now, okay? This, is the, the, this will mention who should act, the researcher or the blogger. We need a blogger draft, of course, and we need the researcher finding, which will be a list of findings, okay? It's not uh, one finding because the supervisor can ask for filling the gap, okay, for further research. So we have the, fir the first draft of the research and then the second draft on this completely new topic, which is com completely new subtopic, which is inside the, the, the overall topic, but it's a different angle. So let's see how it looks like. So again, first we will construct the supervisor, okay? The supervisor will have a, a pretty simple prompt, not that complicated. The instruction will be, we, we say that he is the supervisor between a research and a blogger. I need to orchestrate the task between them and so on and so forth. And we will get the, the researcher finding as an input. So this will be the researcher finding and he will get the first draft. And the second draft, he will get the, the draft of the blogger, right? For start, they will be empty and he needs to, to understand what to do next. And the supervisor will have some functions. The functions here serve, serve as a placeholder just to understand if we want to act with this send to the researcher or send to the blogger, right? So it's not really an implementation of anything. It's just hacking our way to use OpenAI function to do the routing between the, the, the researcher and the blogger with the right input. Or he can finish, okay? This is another situation. So we will define the supervisor. This is a, 
pretty neat uh, way to define some chains in length chain, which call length chain expression language. You define the prompt, the prompt goes to the LLM, the LLM, then the output of the LLM goes to the parser that parses the action that we want to take. Okay. If you will construct some input or run some input with the supervisor, we'll see, you will see that what is going to, what is going to happen when we are saying uh, the supervisor that we want to research about this topic. And let's say that we have an initial finding, a really bad one, okay, that the researcher come, came up with uh, climate change is a major threat to the economy. Uh, super generic, not good. So the supervisor will ask him to expand on it, right? So the, the supervisor will ask, send to the researcher, please provide detailed information on how climate change is threat to the economy. So expand uh, your answer, elaborate on your answer. Include specific example and potential solutions, okay? So you need to be specific. So this is the supervisor is just telling us what to do. This is why he's just an agent, okay? Now we will go to define the researcher. The researcher is also an agent because he like need to need to use DuckDuckGo search, but he also need an agent as ex executor because it's not only deciding what to do, is also operating. Like he also running the function and give a response. So we need to construct him as an agent executor, which include our agent. And our agent will get the prompt of, okay, you, you get the, the job of research about the topic. This is the previous information that you said about, that you know about the subject. Your task is the task that the supervisor will give you and go and research about this task. Okay. Let's define this researcher and let's see what we have when we are input into the researcher that he know that the climate change is a major threat, but the, the task is research about the climate change on the economy. So when we run it, again, he will understand that he need to use DuckDuckGo. He will understand that he need DuckDuckGo again to construct another, another, another query. So there are two queries, right? The economy affect climate change in 2023, impact of climate change on the economy, and in several seconds, you will output the findings. Okay, and we get it. So the output here will be our findings. Okay, findings, significant finding, inflation and food pricing, uh, climate change is expect, and so on and so forth. Now we are uh, defining the blogger. This is the missing part, right? So we have the finding. The blogger will get the finding of the researcher. He will get any previous draft that he already constructed in the previous role or the previous interaction with the supervisor. And then he get uh, the task from the supervisor, what he need to blog about, okay? We will construct the, the agent and we can invoke it. Now it takes some time because it's outputting a lot of tokens, but then we have the impact of the climate change of the economy is pressing issue that cannot be ignored, blah, 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 blah. And now the missing part is like, we have all the agents that we need. We need to combine them to a graph, all right? We need to combine them to a one application to do it all. For that, we need the agent state. The state will serve us to communicate, okay? Communicate between the different parts of the application. So as I said, the, the, the state is the, the turn, the researcher finding, and the blogger draft. But we also need the topic, the overall topic of the of the of what to blog about. And we also need the blogger task and the researcher task because the agent state is, serve, is serving us for communication between the different components. Okay, so we construct the agent, construct the agent state. We also construct the, the topology of the, of the system. As we said, the researcher and the blogger will be uh, connected to the supervisor and the supervisor will be connected to both of them. 
um, with a specific logic. When we construct the graph, we can ask some topic to research about, okay? So the topic is the impact climate change of, on the economy. And let's see what is the supervisor decide to do. So of course the supervisor decide to go to the researcher and research about this topic. Please provide compar comprehensive information on the latest advances on the energy technology, including solar and the effect, I guess the, the, the end is the effect of the economy. So the, the researcher decided to, to operate with the DuckDuckGo three times, okay? So he conduct this search three times. We will respond with a research finding, I guess, in a minute. Okay, we have the research finding. Scroll. And now the supervisor understand we don't we don't have enough and we want to research again. So you can see the supervisor and, and then the researcher. And then again, it's go to Dr. Go again. I hope in the second time we will have what you need. And you go to the blogger. But anyway, and this is a good point that you can like define your restriction. So for example, I didn't cover it, but in this logic, I, I, I defined that the supervisor can go to the researcher only three times. If the next time that you want to go to the researcher and we already have like three findings already in the, in the array of findings of the researcher, he need to go to the blogger. Okay, so this is a good point of like constructing some restriction on the system. And you go to the researcher again. Okay, I will stop that. Let's, so as, as you can see, the, the, the workflow is not perfect. We will need to figure out what is going wrong here. And we can use for specific, this specific use case, we can use the, the length smith and we can understand why he decided we can change the prompt, understand uh, how we can improve it, decide of different strategy for routing, and we can change and, and tweak it. Okay. And I think this is a, a good point to, to stop and say, what is the difference between LLM application and just a software application? I think what I'm incurring is that in LLM application, when something is working with a specific flow is not going to say that it's going to work every time. Okay. There are tons of flow that the, the, the system can go to, especially with agents and like in the software engineering application, regular application world, we have a button. It, if the button is not working, so we know it and we know where to go. So this, I, I think it's a great point to stop and understand where do we need to go and look? So we need to have a good tracing system that can that we can explore, and we need a good designing system or a graph system to construct our multi-agent system and to debug. For example, what it will do right now, not right now, but what I will do if uh, I would debug it is is basically understand why is this routing is not working, right? Why is this routing logic is not working? So I will put a debugger here and understand what is the, the logic that I need to change, okay? Great, so we have this multi-agent, very complex system, but can we improve it? So I, I think the Achilles here is, is basically the researcher. Okay, the researcher have a tool that you can go to go to explore with a search engine, right? A Google search engine. But then if you imagine the result that he's seeing is basically only the paragraphs of the of the web search, right? We have the topics and then we have a following paragraph. And it's pretty small. It's not really up to date. It's not really up to up to date because it's it depends on the Google indexing, right? If, and if if there is a really new paper, for example, that we want to explore or we want to understand something about him, so and Google didn't index it, so we we have a problem with the researcher, right? So I want to show you a tease re really about how we can improve the system, and what we will do is we'll put into the this loop a multimodality model okay there, there are a new paper called some gpt4v okay 
And the things here that we want to understand is that if we want to do a prompt engineering with this new technology, GPT-4 vision, what we want to, to have is to have a common language with the, with the vision model, okay, with the multimodality model. And we can do it by first segment our uh, image and give each segment a number, and then it can super improve the, the accuracy, okay? What we will do is basically we'll have an agent that will have a tool which is called Playwright. This play, Playwright tool can execute some, like for example, it can execute a Chrome browser. It can click some stuff. It can scroll, but then the, the brain itself will be the GPT-4V. So we will start with open Google, okay? And then we will screenshot the screen. We'll segment everything. We will send it to GPT-4 vision to understand what to do, where to click. And then we will click the system. And we will give the agent, the researcher, the ability to navigate the web, okay? So let's jump to the code and see how it looks like. So defining some environment variable, this is how what we are going to see, okay? We are having Google, we will segment everything with the bounding box. The idea here is that we can use the HTML of the page, the DOM elements to understand where are the button and where are the text types, the text input to segment them. And then we will use Playwright tool to, to take the screenshot, okay? So we define some import, we define the agent state, uh, which is pretty complex. We have the page itself, we have the input, we have some images and bounding box. I, 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 I encourage you to go to the GitHub because lack of time, go to the GitHub and explore what, what it means really. Then we'll define our, our functions. So the agent can do click, type, scroll, wait, because sometimes it's loading and we need to wait and go back a page and go to Google. We will define that. We'll define a script that is a helper function. Just as I said, because we are using HTML, we can just get the HTML input text and select and just paint or draw a bounding box around them. And then we will take this screenshot here. Okay. This is our prompt, basically. This is the action that you can do. In this situation, because we are using GPT-4V and GPT-4V doesn't have the, the ability to use function as an object, as an OpenAI function tools, we will use a, the prompt engineering routing strategy to understand what to do. So we are telling the agent or the LLM what, what he need to do. He need to act with an action. So we will use prompt engineering to design the, the strategy. Construct this GPT-4 vision preview. Okay, we give the agent a tool and okay, we can see that it opened Google. Okay, it's straight went to Google. Now let's ask some questions. So for example, give me the information about the attention is all you need paper from archive. Let's see what it's going to do. So we'll able to see here that it Type the input, it's like screenshot for a second, but here you can see it uh, more clearly. Take the screenshot, do the bounding box, and understand what is the next uh, action to take. Okay, so it's like taking the screenshot and give it to GPT-4 vision, and the GPT-4 vision says what to do. So you navigate to Google, search for attention is all you need, go to the paper, and it's pretty lazy. <laughs> Instead of uh, go directly to the PDF, this is what he did previously. He just took the description from here, okay? He took the description from here, and this is the answer. The attendance is all you need, submitted by archive, blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's a good answer, but we can, of course, tweak it, and we can do a prompt engineering. We can do a multi-agent system for, for each system will be a GPT-4 vision model that will search the web differently in certain situation, and we can improve the, the, the solution like that. Okay, prompt engineering and workflow engineering. These, those are the two. Okay. So let's wrap it up. So we talked about what is an agent and how you can build the first agent. Then we improve the agent with some state that I think that it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty crucial to understand why do we need state and how we can save it, how we can dump it. 
easily in the context of a user. And then we improved our solution with workflow engineering and prompt engineering technique using like multi-agent system, critique with, with the worker, and then even a multi-modality system that can traverse the web as he wants. In my opinion, I think the, the trade-off here is understanding or prompt engineering the, the solution and workflow engineering the solution in advance, and then keep the, keep the thing that you need, you need to be dynamic as a, as a routing decision for the agent. Now, I believe that as like, for example, in regular software, software when we have a, a, a system design a paradigm, here we will see this establishing here in the agent framework, how we can have specific person or specific senior engineer, LLM engineer that can design the system in advance and then it's only implementation. I believe also that agent right now is 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 in, on the on the rise and on the rise for 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 the past year. But I think that 2024 and 2025 will be the the year of agents, and we will see more like transition from routing routing plus code solution in production to state machine production. Thank you all. And if you have questions, this is the time. And of course, you can connect with me using LinkedIn and ask questions as you, as you wish.